Hey guys, welcome to my second vlog um, on electronics. And I decided to do a, since everybody seems to like the lasers, I decided to do a four part series on lasers. Uh, we're going to cover red, green, blue, um, which is kind of more like violet. Uh, infrared, very powerful uh, 3 watt infrared laser that we'll actually be building a uh, laser etcher with. Um, we're going to go over the different wavelengths and what they're good for. and and, uh, but actually, before we start, let me show you here what I have here. These here are laser protection glasses. And what they do is they block out, this one blocks out blue and green uh, lasers. And they offer you eye protection, so you're not blinding yourself. Um, this is blue-green, I got red and infrared. I get these at Dragon Lasers. I'll actually... Um, provide a link. But first and foremost, remember safety when it comes to um, lasers. Especially these lasers. We're going to be dealing with some fairly powerful lasers, especially when we get to 3 and 4 watts. And we're only going to cover infrared at that at that um, strength. A lot of the lasers you see here are from 30 to 300 milliwatts. And we'll review those. And of course this is for red laser and the last one you saw was for infrared laser. So, um, Dragon Lasers will is a good place to get these laser safety glasses. Always use laser safety glasses. Okay, that said, now let me put the safety glasses aside. Hey guys, um, uh, today's vlog is going to be on diffraction gratings and we will get to diffraction gratings, but um, uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of things about uh, the lasers first so that uh, we have an understanding of what it is where we're actually talking about and looking at. Now, uh, you might remember this guy from the first um, vlog. We actually hooked him up to something similar to this, um, except uh, it was um, two batteries. This is four. What we're going to do is we're going to hook up, not today, and the future vlog, we're going to hook up two AA batteries into here and then uh, leave a space for the laser so it's all going to be self-contained in one box. But first, let, let's understand, uh, let's go over some, some terms and, and what they actually mean instead of me just saying them. Um, this, I called this a laser diode last time. This is not a laser diode, okay? This is a laser housing, a laser lens, a laser diode, uh, a power driver, a, a driver, and some wires. So, what is a laser diode? Let's see if we can zoom in on this. Okay. This is a laser diode. Let's get in real close. Uh, you see the three prongs there. That is what a laser diode is. And you can get these fairly cheap. I used to build these, you know, from scratch with the housings. This is a laser power driver. Now, you can either get these online. Um, you know, it's got a little switch and everything else. They're cheap enough. Or you could actually build one yourself, which is, I have a self-built one here. So this is one I built myself, and this is actually for a 200 uh, milliwatt red laser. So anyways, that's basically a laser diode. When I, I'll, You'll hear me refer to these as laser diodes. Um, there's, like, there's all kinds of different lasers. Most of the, the early lasers that they used in holography, like home holography, um, consisted of uh, helium neon, lasers, uh, not so much argon, argon's good, so they were, they were pretty much gas tubes. But these are a little different, these laser diodes that you'll see. Uh, they actually used, I think they created a red laser out of jello once. Uh, but most of these use crystals, like the green laser will have a, an infrared laser diode and it'll pump it through a crystal which will give you the green light. Uh, which 
brings me to the next topic, which is laser safety. I had done this video earlier, and I didn't like it. It didn't contain enough information. I'm actually going to take pieces out of that and put it into this, where I review the um, safety goggles and the safety glasses. Okay, there's three lasers that we're going to be dealing with, three different kinds of lasers. We're not going to deal with helium, neon, or argon, or any of the gas lasers. We're going to deal with the small laser diodes. We're going to deal with the, uh, the blue lasers, 150 milliwatt blue, uh, 300 milliwatt red, and 200 milliwatt green. Uh, each, all the, all three of these lasers has some light that your eye can't see. So, uh, like the red laser has some infrared light. The green laser, even though it's in the middle of the visible spectrum, um, has some light you can't see. Uh, earlier I mentioned that to get the green laser, what you have is you have an infrared laser diode pumped through a crystal. Um, I didn't bring the crystal with me, but in the future one I will show you what a crystal looks like. Uh, pumped through the crystal. And that gives you the green light. Well, this guy right here, when you read him on a light meter, he will read 100 milliwatts. But there's only 70 milliwatts of visible, 30 milliwatts of infrared. So even these guys you have to be careful of. When I'm playing and, and I'm doing my laser projects here, I'm, I'm wearing safety glasses. Um, you know, if you're out on the field, like uh, the green lasers are used for astronomy. And when we do some of our astronomy stuff, we, we actually, you don't wear the laser gla goggles because, you know, you can't see the laser then and you're using the laser to point out stars. So you just have to be really, really careful when you're dealing with any of these lasers. Now you see a lot of lasers here and we have a couple of different projects going on. Uh, one, we're going to do the, the glow board for the 150 milliwatt laser so you can see that. Uh, but most of these green lasers and these red lasers are going to be dedicated to, uh, we're building a Beacons robot and that's all going to be documented, uh, video documented online. Um, I'm going to start robotics tutorials as well as the electronics tutorials. Uh, I think I'll just have one single vlog though for all that stuff. So a lot of these these lasers, what's going to happen is the Beacons bot, uh, it's for the UMass Boston Robotics Club and the theme, the, the mascot for the uh, sports teams at UMass Boston is a lighthouse. So we're so the theme for the robot, of course, is going to be light, and one of the things it's going to do is it's going to have a light show. So, uh, and I'm going to show you now how we're going to create that light show. Uh, we're going to use actually diffraction gratings. Uh, I'm sorry. I, actually, I'm going to show you that in a couple of minutes. First, I'd like to discuss something that will be in one of the electronics tutorials, which is, uh, if you remember from, if you've watched my electronics tutorials, you've seen... Um, resistors in series and parallel, LEDs in series and parallel. You will see batteries in series and parallel. It depends on when you watch this video. It's it's probably next week. I'm going to come out with uh, Lab 5B. So, but I just thought I'd mention that that now. Uh, these green lasers here require um, three volts. So either I could take one of these three volt batteries. Actually, let's turn on our multimeter. Uh, either I can take one of these 3-volt batteries. And we'll test that right now. Yeah, this is, I'm still set up for the earlier video tutorial. So, uh, let's assume that I didn't know which side was positive and which side was negative. Okay, well, let's assume the side with the hump is negative in the bottom is positive. And we hook up and see I got 3.8 volts but I got negative so it's wrong. The bottom is uh, negative and the top with the little hump is positive for your batteries. And of course they even show that. I even have a, a little thing here that gives you the plus. Um, so you, and the, the minus is down here. So you know that. Um, but I'm a st when I build these tutorials and these vlogs, I assume you don't know anything, and we build from there. Okay, so this gives us three volts. Now, we could light up any of these green lasers. Now we have some double A's here and some C batteries. Um, if we look at one double A battery, we see it gives us 1.34 volts. It's actually, these are rechargeables. They might be running a little low. It should be 1.5 volts. 1.33 volts. And on the C battery, 
we have 1.53 batteries, 5 volts. But that's not because it's a C. These would read 1.5 volts too. A C stores more energy, so we can have, uh, we can power stuff that requires higher milliamps. Uh, or for a longer period of time, something that requires less milliamps for a longer period of time. But we need 6 volts. So uh, if we add two AA batteries together in series, which means you go from positive tip to negative tip, that's series. If we add them in series, you're going to see our multimeter now reads 2.6 volts. Actually, let's use the C's because I know they're fully charged. C batteries here um, with 3.08 volts uh, using those together so we could actually power our lasers with this and we could you know we could power a more powerful laser because it has um, it'll supply more current okay now we look at these little lasers that we have the, the green lasers we have um, 30 milliwatt, 50 milliwatt, 200 milliwatt, 70 milliwatt lasers. Now when you get them, they come, a lot of the time, they just come like this. You know, this is, this is our housing. Oh, that's another thing I think I should mention. You might want to get a security bit set like this. When you're adjusting the lenses of some of these guys, uh, you'll see me adjust, this is a 200 milliwatt red, a burnt out one. You'll, you'll see me adjust it like this very easily, but a lot of these green lasers, what they have inside of them, let me bring this up so we can focus. Uh, see that? And you can't use a flathead screwdriver on that. We actually use a security bit. If you use a flathead screwdriver, it'll, it'll scuff up your, um, uh, your lens. So generally speaking, we use a security bit set. Actually, that was a bad example because we needed a bigger one for that, but let's see. This guy here, and uh, this bit size will work for this guy, and it'll adjust the lens. Uh, basically, if you're doing light shows with these devices, what you want to do is you want to um, take a, a reference point far away and adjust the lens so that the, the dot is as small as possible at the furthest distance. If you're burning stuff, like I see all these YouTube videos with people taking these lasers and burning, you know, popping black balloons and burning uh, black electrical tape. That was here. Um, if you're doing that, then you need to focus it in on what you're burning. And we'll actually, we'll, we'll do a little bit of that right now. We'll, we'll burn something so you guys can see it. I don't know why they do it, but uh, we're actually building a laser etcher that'll burn into wood, but we're using a 3.2 watt infrared laser for that. Okay, uh, so you get the lasers, they're like this. Now, usually there's a contact point. Oh, I've also got to mention, there's a little potentiometer right there where you can put in a little screwdriver and adjust that. Um, I've burnt out many lasers trying to get, you know, an extra couple of milliwatts out of it. It's better to leave it alone or reduce it and adjust it lower if you want the laser to last longer. So most of them have these little switches on them. So not only you've got to supply power, but you've got to supply a switch. Well, when we hook them up to these, these have their own switches on them. Or we, maybe we don't like this switch. You know, this is something if you're going to... it here. I don't see it here, but we have it. We're actually going to incorporate one of these into a flashlight, and you may be able to use this. You know, we're going to gut out a flashlight and put a, put a laser in it. And you may be able to use that button for this. For the most part, I don't use these buttons. Uh, what I tend to do is I'll take a small uh, wire wrap, just like this, and what I'll do is I will wrap it around the button to keep it on. there. That button is pressed. So, and then I would just snip this off and the button is pressed. And um, 
So generally, there's a there's a second contact on these that's positive, but the spring here is negative, and the positive is actually the case. Uh, this works well when we're making a, a flashlight from these, uh, when we're using a flashlight housing. Let's actually take a quick peek at this. So let's put the negative here, and we'll take the positive. I know I'm using yellow. And we touch it to the case, and we get light. Of course, I got my safety glasses on right now, so I'm not worried about it shining off of other things. So as you can see, what I have here is I have the, the negative touching the bottom. And there's going to be links where to purchase these on eBay is where I get them mostly. And I get them from China. And you need to be patient if you're going to order these. Uh, it takes like three to six weeks for these things to arrive. I've always gotten my shipments uh, from, from most of these places. But when we look on eBay, and we'll look on eBay, I'll show you the things to look out for. Make sure they have a lot of reviews and not a lot of negative reviews. Uh, if someone has like one or two reviews, don't, don't bother with them. Or if they have zero reviews. So basically, that's our three volts for that. Yes, we are going to get into diffraction gratings. Um, here's a more expensive driver, laser driver. Now right here, this is a heat sink. Anything over 100 milliwatts, you want to put a heat sink on. Uh, this actually comes with a heat sink here. And that's what heats up on this 200 milliwatt laser right down here. On this, on this one, this is the driver here, and the um, diode is actually in here. This is the portion that heats up here. That's why it's got the heat sink here. It's not down here. Um, but this is, we're going to be using this for the laser for a laser light show as well. But we needed a higher milliwatt with the reds because it's not as visible. And we also need. Uh, for this laser driver, this is a very nice laser driver. Most of the ones you'll see, um, this, these stores, you have the options to get one of these. Uh, from now on, these are the laser drivers I'm purchasing for all my lasers. They, they work great, uh, except for the small package ones. So basically, um, this requires um, at least, uh, I believe it's 5 volts. We're going to actually supply 6 volts to it. We're going to take two 3-volt batteries in series. As you can, you'll see the multimeter over there. We'll kick this up above six volts. Seven point six six volts, which is perfectly within the range of our driver. See three point eight eight each, and these are not under load. That's why it looks like a high voltage, but it's really it's not under load. Okay, so let's just put this back over here. And I'm just going to hold this. Put one on the positive. I'm just going to show you. Uh, everybody likes to see lasers burn things. So once we get the infrared laser out, you'll really see something burning. Uh, the reason why people burn black plastic. I mean, these these lasers will burn other things too, especially this 300 milliwatt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus down in on the electrical tape around this battery. see smoke and it's burning it. Actually the 300 milliwatt does a pretty good job. It'll burn right through this pretty quickly. But um, black absorbs. The, the, the darker the color the more light it absorbs the easier it is. They don't tell you that when they're, they're just saying oh look at me and my cool laser. Okay, now back to, oh, by the way, if you're curious, this is a little motor we're going to use to actually spin the heads for these things, for the uh, light show, laser light show. So we're going to take you step by step, we're going to, you know, we're going to show you the diffraction gratings and how they work, uh, you know, the power sources, the power drivers, we're going to show you everything, so, and where we get all this stuff, so you can actually go do your own. Um, I remember when I was younger going through a hundred videos of people just showing off what they had and saying, oh, look at this, but they don't actually give you any inf information. We're actually going to give you information. 
So you want the proper bits so you don't scratch your lenses when you're focusing these things. Okay, we have this guy, we have this guy as on. Diffraction gratings. When was he going to get to diffraction gratings? Well, we're getting to them right now. Diffraction gratings is a little piece of glass or um, acrylic plastic that that has a lot of prisms in it. Let's bring these up close here so you can see them. Just little pieces of glass. It has lots of uh, prisms in there. And basically what you do is if you use one prism, it'll break up your laser beam into a, a bunch of beams. So if you use one prism, it'll break up your, your laser beam into a bunch of beams. Right? And then if you take a second prism and you put it above the first, and we're going to do this, and you turn it, then you get these animated effects where beams split apart and they come together. That's how they do it. That's all these two little pieces of glass is all they use. And you can't use the acrylic ones if you're going over, you know, say 50 milliwatts um, for your lasers. Um, so that's all they do. That's in these big laser light shows. It just has two little pieces of glass in there. So let's see if we can see that now. Let's see if we can come up with an easy way to do this. Oh, here we go. Let's take our breadboard and we'll put him in the. Let's make sure you can see this on the camera. We'll put him on this side of the breadboard and him on this side of the breadboard. There's a complete breadboard tutorial. Now we have a 3 volt battery connected here. Hopefully we get some power on this. Let's find out right now. We'll take a red and a black. Put it in the black. Put it in the red. Let's see if that battery has any charge to it. Red and black. And on our multimeter we've got 310. So 3 volts. So we, we should have enough to power our laser for this demonstration. This is a quick demonstration. We're actually going to do one at night on the side of a building, um, which will be in uh, Vlog 3. But right now we just want to get to the diffraction gradients themselves. Okay, so this guy has the laser driver. He has shrink wrap, and that's what's holding down his power switch. So as soon as I plug him in, he will come on. So let's plug, uh, make sure we got it right, negative to negative, and positive to positive. And we have our little laser beam. This is just a little 30 milliwatt, just for the demonstration. And uh, we have our diffraction gratings. Actually, maybe we'll use the bigger diffraction gratings. That might be easy. I showed you those little pieces of glass. And they are diffraction gratings. You can get, actually get them in bigger format. We're actually, these here are what we'll be using for our project. These are those two pieces of glass, and, and you can just turn the knob, and that's what we're going to use the motor for. So let me see what I have here for diffraction gratings. Okay, we've got a laser. Okay, that's just a line. Okay, now this is broken up into many. But, if you notice, it, it is broken up into many, but it's, it's really not one of those animated light shows. Now, if I took another piece of glass and put that... See, the problem is I don't have the... Uh, and then you can get an animated light show. But let's actually use these babies right here. This, all this is is two pieces of glass. And we're going to show you with the more powerful laser on like the side of the building. And see how we get an animation out of that? One piece of glass is turning, and the other piece of glass is not. Or one diffraction grating is turning, and the other is not. It gives us that little display. This one here, same thing. This is my favorite, and this is the one you see on most laser light shows. And it gives us that little animation. Where beams come together and split apart. So you can get many different patterns. 
and there'll be links to all of these below. If there aren't, if you go look and there's no links, it's just I, I just posted the video and I haven't put up the links yet. And of course, this is another one. And of course, the further away you are, the larger it is. Sorry for the interruption, guys. But anyways, that's basically diffraction gratings. Uh, there'll be links of where you can get different diffraction gratings. You know, uh, I, some of them may be expired by the time I'm just keeping these videos posted. So some of them may expire by the time you see them. But um, you can find them. We'll, we'll search for them. I'll show you how to search for them. And that's all it is, little pieces of glass. And you can get them very cheaply. Uh, be careful if you order these. We ordered a bunch of these. And uh, some of them were very hard to turn, which means it's, it's going to be very hard to get one of these little motors to turn the thing. Luckily, uh, we have enough of them for the, the robot that we're building. So we're going to have a big laser light display everywhere above this robot. And like I was just saying, the further away you are, the bigger it is. But you also need to focus that laser lens further away as well. Uh, generally speaking, I, I focus it far enough away that, you know, no matter where I'm displaying the lights, it looks pretty good. Okay, that's it. So that should be enough of log two. Uh, also, I'll put in some links for some of the other higher powered lasers. And one thing I should mention, actually, this is the one. I'm actually going to show you uh, where this was to build it. This is a multi-turn trim pot, this blue device right here. as a multi-turn trim pot. And we haven't covered trim pots yet, but there's an actual way uh, that you can determine whether the... Um, it, it's A trim pot is a variable resistor. Okay, like I was saying, this is a multi-turn trim pot, a variable resistor. And in the instructions when you get this, it's just a little kit you put together. In the instructions when you get this, they will, uh, there's some bad soldering on the bottom of that. I don't want to show that. That's from my early days. Um, there'll be some instructions at what to set this for. If you set it too low, you're going to burn out your laser like I did with this one. This one was actually attached to this, and I burnt this, this laser out. So, just a word to the wise sufficient. And that should be enough for this vlog. I hope you enjoy the videos. Keep watching. Oh, one more thing. If you have any questions or something you'd like to, me to go over with these lasers, let me know. You know, a comment or an email or, you know, whatever Vimeo does. Vimeo is so much better than YouTube. Sorry, YouTube. But, um, let me know and, and I'll try to review it and put it in a vlog or if it's appropriate for the tutorials, I'll put it in there as well.